Hello there gardening friends. This is probably going to be uh, my last uh, garden tour. We are in mid-September already. Things are starting to slow down in the garden. Blooms are not as plentiful. Um, yeah, my garden's starting. I'm starting to put my garden to sleep. Certain things, maintenance I'm doing right now. So I'll show you today what is still in bloom. Um, so let's start on this side. My peach glower, there's a few blooms. This one is almost done, but this one is newer. She's still looking great. Sedum Joy is doing great. I love this deep pink. It's really pretty. And I have a whole bunch of them all over my garden. I love it. Oh yeah, peach glory decided to send up two really tall um, stems right here and there are blooms on it. Next year, I'm gonna try to um, keep her at at least waist or underarm um, height so that I will be able to see the blooms. Look at these ones. You can't even see them when they're so tall. Okay, my dancing in the dark is still blooming. Look how gorgeous she is. Love, love this one. This is the one where is there was a rose of Sharon located right here and she was teeny tiny and she didn't really send up a whole lot of blooms but I took out the rose of Sharon and she's super happy now. That makes me very happy. My phlox pushed out a uh, second flush. Love, love this color. This clump has grown so big over the year. It took over this whole area. I've divided it and spread um, the flowers elsewhere in the garden. And I also had to kind of reposition some of the flocks, the clumps, so that my roses, uh, these two, will have room to grow. So I planted um, lower items such as this hookah right here. I think it's forever purple. Um, so that there's better airflow around here. I also stuck in a gara here. It should come back for me next year. I grew it from seed. This gym is so pretty in the spring. I can't wait for it to come back next year. Love, love this color. And then I have one of this slap. Oh my gosh, look how pretty this color is. Uh, this one is Eliza. Where if you know how to pronounce it, let me know. But yeah, she's a beauty. Oh my gosh, I, I love, love this peach tone. Another dancing in the dark, still has some blooms left. So pretty. I love this deep, deep red. Gorgeous. Oh, look, fun. Is this fun in the sun? I think it should be. Yeah, fun in the sun has a pretty bloom. This one is quite fragrant, I believe. Oh, look at that formation. So pretty. Ah, this one right here is Blessings. She has quite a few um, buds left that are still going to be opening. Oh, look what I found here. I think this year, a lot of my plants, what are these, like grasshoppers? They've been eating a lot of my plants and roses. I have so many of them this year in my garden. Look at Blessings. She's a pretty one. two in bloom and I think this is the most I've ever um, a shot of living easy rose with a lot of blooms she has a whole bunch right now looking great and her leaves are so good this one is one in one of the few in my garden that has not suffered from powdery mildew or black spots uh, same with blessings right here same with dancing with the dancing in the dark you know what to be honest with you this side of the garden actually have not really suffered from powdery mildew or black spots weird that side on the other hand though yes has suffered a lot i gotta think about why that might be hmm okay if you look in the back here my cleomies are almost done tiny little bit of blooms left the seeds are starting to drop so i'm hoping next year i will have a whole bunch of volunteer plants back there that was the whole idea of popping them up there and my zinnias i have two pots with them here the furthest one all the way back there is done done it's too far back for me to even maintain it to cut it at the moment so i'm just gonna leave it but the this one right here is still doing okay but at uh, if you 
look closely at this time of the year they're really not good looking a lot of powdery mildew at the around this time of year so i'm gonna be after uh this sometime this week i'm hacking all of those back and this is easy does it she has quite a few blooms left but not open yet she's gorgeous when she opens this is the vlog I divided, still looking very, very pretty. My comb flower here doing well still. Oh yes, that's another maintenance thing that I have to do um, this week, hopefully, is to take off all of the blooms of my uh, comb flowers. So I came across another gardener who have suggested by this time of year, we should take down all of the blooms so that the plant can focus its energy on um, what is it a growing root system or you know uh, growing more roots to be stronger for next year so we should take off the bloom so you know what i will heed that advice and do that here's another forever purple hookah gorgeous this one is not pushing out as much uh blooms as the one across over there i'll show you when we get over there lamb's ear so this is my first year growing them oh i wonder what is eating it look it has holes all over it but when i first bought it um, it was a tiny pot, teeny tiny. I mean, I think the clump was like maybe this much with three, three, four small plants. So what I did was when I came home, I divided it and put them into individual pots so they have a chance to grow. Once they got up to a bit of a decent size and I felt that the root system was a bit more established, I chance planted them into my garden. So I have three clumps. I'll show you as we walk around, but this is the first one and they spread really, really fast. I believe this one may send up uh, some flowers, but I'm not crazy about the flower blooms. I'm planning to chop off the flowers once they come out. There's the new rose that I put in, Hardy, uh, Party Hardy. She's doing really, really well. No sign of stress whatsoever. So I'm very happy about that. And look at this one. Her fl second flush. Oh, so pretty. I love this light pink color. This one is called, I think, Morden Blush or something like that. Morden Blush. Yes. My Moonlight Romantica yellow rose is here and she sent up a ginormous stem. So I just kind of like um, tied her to the fence and she grew an extra stem. So I don't know if she's, she's not supposed to be a climbing rose, but she's doing something funny there. Oh yes. So I finally got my hands on a Invincible Ruby. I've been eyeing one of this for a long time. I finally waited for them to go on sale. Uh, what is it, 50%? Original price is $39.99, and I got it for half price, so I'm super happy with it. Look at the gorgeous color. So I have a lot of whites, um, what is it, hydrangea in my garden, so I really wanted to add ones that have color, and I just love this because it has dark color most of the season. Yes, and I don't have to amend the soil or anything like that to change the color, so I love it. So she's hardy from zone 3 to 8, which is great, um, down to negative 40, which is perfect for my climate because we get quite cold here. Grows to 3 to 4 um, height-wise and then 3 to 5 um, wide across. So perfect. And the spot that I am eyeing for her is this one right here. So I have a white... Annabelle right there. I also have another white one here. This white one I find is too close to my yellow rose. So I've been really eyeing to move it. So my game plan is I'm gonna move this one over all the way behind this phlox right here. So she's almost side by side with the other white one here. So in the summer, it will be a clump of white back here. And then I'm gonna put my new one, the Ruby, right here. A little bit further away from my uh, rose so she has room to grow and breathe but right here so she'll be a splash of pink dark pink right here I think it will be a very lovely backdrop right beside this pink phlox and uh, the other colors lighter colors here so it will just kind of like I, I feel that it will enhance all the other lighter colors at the front here if that makes sense at least that's the idea in my head <laughs> all right let's go over here I'm eyeing this geranium, whether I should take it out or not. I mean, I've loved it over the years, but I find in the last 
uh, specifically this year. She's grown very leggy, not as productive. She has purple flowers. She comes back every year, but she just becomes really messy. And I don't know if I want that kind of mess around here anymore, especially now that I have so many roses planted here. I just don't want anything that may cause diseases. Um, on the you know lower level of the roses so I might remove it next year I'm sitting on the fence I'm not sure yet uh, oh I got my baptisia right there that's one of the other maintenance I have to do it's a false indigo bluish purple color it blooms in spring it's very tiny this year it barely did any growth so I think with what was suggested is this one should be also taken down too so that it can focus on its roots. So I should be doing that this time, time um, sorry, sometime this week. Okay, so we have here another white um, Annabelle hydrangea. It's huge, it's massive. It covers this whole area with white blooms. So it's really, really pretty. This hyssop is actually in a pot. Um, next thing I need to do also, another maintenance is chop it way down um, and then store it in my area there. I'll show you under my gazebo to overwinter. I think it's a better spot so it's a little bit more shelter. These cone flowers are still looking pretty decent but I will be taking off the bloom soon. Oh, I got this one. So it is an early blooming, um, uh, what is it, salvia. And it did really, really well at the beginning of the season. Uh, after it bloomed, it got really messy. So I hacked it all the way down and it's flushing out new leaves right now. And this one looks so, so pretty. Really tall too, I believe. Yeah, so this one is coming back. My poor hooker that I chance planted when it was too hot, but she seems to be rebounding because look, she's uh, forming new leaves, looking a bit healthier, poor thing. My new rose that I planted, Wild Blue Yonda. This one is was a bit kind of sad looking when I purchased her already, but she seems to be doing okay now. I've been trying to really uh, stay on top of watering so they don't dry out the two new one. And here's another coneflower. These blooms will be taken off very soon. This is the other rose I told you about. Similar, very similar in color as this one, but the formation is very different. And look, she just sent up a new flower uh, spy, um, stem there and she's actually pretty decent size here I took out what did I take out here I took out oh my gosh what did oh yes the uh, black eye Susan because it was covering her right here so I took it out so that she has some breathing room so she'll do better more autumn joy gorgeous color at this time of year absolutely love it here's my other Morden blush another flush of her beautiful bloom. I really love this color. It's so gorgeous. Oh, and here's my midnight romantica with one bloom here. Isn't she pretty? Very, very pretty. This is her second year in the garden. I have to say, so I have two of them, right? So one here and then one on the other side. They have not produced a whole lot of blooms yet, but I have heard that it takes about two to three years for them to get established and, you know, start producing a lot of blooms. So hopefully next year on her third year, they will push out more blooms. My flocks. Oh my gosh. I don't know if anybody else loves flocks as much as I do, but I grew these from seed. They were seeds that I collected from last year. And uh, this is by far one of my fat, like favorite color, favorite, this peachy color. So it starts off like um, darker color right here. The bees love them. And then it kind of uh, fade or mature into this lighter color. I so, so love this one. I seeded a whole bunch of them and none of them have really bloomed this year. So I think next year they should bloom for me. And this is the other color. Oh my gosh, look. <laughs> I got bumblebees. I always find bees sleeping in my flowers. That is so adorable. Look at that. Hello. Oh my God, that is so cute. Ah, I don't think there's any in this peachy one. No, that is so adorable. So yes, foxglove, love it. Oh yes, and what I have planned, talk about foxglove. I have these 
seedlings that I grew from seed. They have been in here for a while, so they haven't grown all too much. What I plan to do is plop some of them at the back here. So they are spring flowers, so they will come up with their spike. Hopefully next year they will gift me with some uh, flowers. My yarrows, they are starting to, some of them are starting to push out another flush of uh, flowers. Gotta say, the ones that I have planted in pots came back over the winter, which is fantastic. But in terms of bloom wise, they did not produce too many blooms this year. Um, I honestly am not sure why, uh, what, the, what might be the cause of it, because last year they did amazing. Oh yeah, I totally forgot about my, one of my favorite dahlias. Oh, here's another bee falling asleep. I find this every morning in my garden. It's hilarious. They just fall asleep and they lay there and they don't wake up until like a lot, uh, much later in the day. This one is so pretty. Oh, game plan for this one. I highly doubt it will work, but we'll see. I don't want to dig it up. So what I'm going to do is I'm planning to pile a whole bunch of uh, compost, um, whatever I can find to lay on top of it to overwinter it so that it doesn't get too cold and it might come back next year for me. And it's an experiment. I hope it works because that will be fantastic if it does. So just laying a whole bunch of stuff on top of it, keeping it warm over the winter, hopefully it will come back without me having to dig it out. That's the game plan. My lavender, I have three of these in pots, terracotta pots. They were here last year, came back this year, but look at them. They look like they're half dead. I think I'm gonna take them out. I might plant them in another spot. I might not, but yeah, I think it's done. Um, I've given them a whole year, a uh, whole summer to rebound, but they have not. So they're coming out. Okay. Oh, another one of my new plants that I've grown this year, but is probably one of my fave that I am definitely going to plant again next year is this, uh, Gumfrina from Proven Winners. Oh, I gotta find the tag over there to give you the exact names, but yes, it was a tiny, teeny little plant like this when I bought her. And she has grown huge. I got three of her. Love, love this color too. It goes so well with so many of my dear other plants. Right. Oh yes, this is the second clump of my uh, lamb's ear. It started off with like maybe two tiny little plants and look at it, it has grown a lot and it's spreading fast. Um, I'm loving it. I don't mind the fact that it's spreading because I love to use it as ground cover. So I'm okay with that. And look at this, isn't she pretty? She, an anemone, I believe that's what they're called. They're late bloomers. So I have two, one here and the other one on the other side that I showed you earlier. Really, really pretty. Mr. Lincoln, super fragrant. And look at her color, so pretty. I'm still getting used to this bright, bright color, but once she opens up a little bit wider, the inside here turns more into a corally pink, not pinky, corally color, so less red. That's why she's sticking around because I love that. Uh, my knockout rose just sent out a whole cluster, but it's done now. Oh, pink promise have a bud here. And two blooms here. They're kind of older blooms though. Reach all the way in there, yeah. This is pink promise, very pretty pink. Oh, look, Queen Elizabeth is sending out some new stems. I chopped down the hydrangeas that was beside her. It was ginormous. I think it was blocking way too much sunlight. She was not, she has not grown that much over the season, but look at her now, she's growing. And then I have a climbing rose back here. Her face is a red one. She has not performed, uh, produced a lot of blooms, but she's doing okay. She's climbing well. So I'm happy with her progress. And there's uh, some climbers there, but you can hardly see it from here. 
This is South Belt, South Africa. Ah, uh, Sun Belt, sorry, South Africa. This is an older bloom, so it turns a little bit pinkish around the edge when it mature. But this whole cluster of them right here, that should be in bloom very soon. Ooh, Dark Desire. Love, love this color. There's a whole bunch of buds on here. So there's what, four or five other ones that will be in bloom soon. And the color, I mean, the, the fragrance is really nice. And look at this. Uh, Delaney Sisters. Wow, this is the biggest cluster she produced this year. Is she not pretty? Crazy, right? Oh, I love this combination. White and then pinkish at the edge. Ginormous cluster. These ones are the same as the... Uh, what is that other one? Peach Glory over there. Just setting up some ginormous flower stems. Next year, I'm gonna try to keep it at waist, underarm uh, level, so that at least you can enjoy the blooms when they come out, because at this point, they're like way up here. It's almost six feet-ish. Yeah. And these are the uh, pet stamen that I just put in. Been trying to water it um, regularly so it doesn't dry out and it's looking good. Same in with the second one that we put in there the other day. The Black Eyed Susan, they're about done so I will be chopping them down very uh, this week too. That's one of my fall, the other fall chore. Okay, I don't know if anybody has grown this. I lost a tag of course. Unfortunately, I can't tell you the exact name, but it is some kind of pin cushion and it has been blooming all season long. So pretty. It sends out these uh, pretty stem. At one point, it was really big. I hacked it down really close down to the ground and look, she reflushed with all these blooms again. I have three. This one is doing the best. The, so she is still very healthy. I'll show you the other two once we come across it. They're not as big of a clump as this one, but this one is just loving life in this, uh, this spot right here. Okay. There's the other flocks I chance planted. Still doing great. Still lots of blooms. No sign of stress whatsoever. Happy about that. And look, pretty lady is sending out some flower buds still. So I should be getting a few blooms before the season end, which is great. My Sun King is still tucked in there. She's in a pot though. So I will have to put her under shelter for the winter to winter over. These are looking really great. Uh, first year um, me that I'm growing them. Um, and so far they're holding up really nice. Uh, really nice pop of color. I don't know if... They're my kind of flowers, to be honest with you. The reason I bought them is for the color. But um, yeah, they've been doing really well. Oh, held up really well in the crazy heat that we had and still maintaining its color now going into fall. These poor, uh, what is it? Oh my gosh, Angelonia, is that these are called? So I bought a whole bunch of these at the beginning of the season. They were gorgeous and then of course, um, all of the other plants started to grow bigger and covered them and they just looked really bad. Look at this one. Has not even rebounded or recovered from that stress. Uh, I don't think I'll be buying these next year. Not because I don't love them. I just feel that there's too many other plants in my garden that I m no longer really need them to fill in the space anymore. Yarrow. Another pot that is pushing out oh my gosh this color is so pretty i think this one is called peach something sky ah there it is proven winners firefly peach sky gorgeous but once again over winter well i mean it came back right but in terms of blooms there's not a lot this year no not a lot at all um yes yeah, so it's unfortunate because this one is gorgeous Love that color. Pinky-ish, peachy-ish. It's a combination of a few colors. I love yours. There's the other lavender I was talking about. Second pot. Yeah, looking really bad all season long. They're going, they're leaving. 
this patch of my zinnias are doing really well still plenty of colors look at that and i gotta say i'm saving the seeds for this these for sure so this combination of the dark magenta with this light pink here two-tone color is just gorgeous together oh my god so pretty i love this is probably one of my favorite i have four pa um, pots of these grown the only thing i don't like about growing them in pots is that they dry out so fast every bit of heat they start looking sad and then i'm <clears throat> excuse me <clears throat> oops sorry a plane is flying overhead so any heat they would just wilt really annoying to upkeep to be honest so next year i don't know if i still want to do them in pots or just stick them in the ground because it's just way too much work but they're looking gorgeous absolutely gorgeous and this one unlike the other one in the far patch there rarely any powdery mildew at this time of year crazy right oh this one first time growing these uh proven winners diamond frost i believe yes it took a bit of time to establish stayed kind of small for the longest time and then it exploded uh gumfrina i paired it with uh this what is this purpley color gumfrina uh i think it's actually a really nice contrast i don't have the tag for that gumfrina where did it go oh yes um so i really like this pairing the white with this gumfrina it is not overpowering one another i think i sh might do another one of this next year i don't know if i would do this gumfrina next year though although i think it grew really well the color kind of throws me off a little bit because i don't think it pair that amazing with the rest of my color scheme but i would definitely i think um get more of this next year the uh, diamond frost did really well in my garden this year Look at my hookahs, they're still doing, they're all doing very, very good still. Still maintain its color. They do like a little bit more shade. If you put them in full sun, they start to scorch and burn a little bit. There's the other uh, pin cushion that I just showed you not too long ago. This patch does not do that well. It did send up a whole bunch of tall um, spiky flower, which is lovely because it kind of just uh, mingle with uh, the surrounding flowers. But in terms of growth, it's small. I think it's because it's not in, it's not getting enough sun. So um, it stayed very small all season. So here is Cosmos Fairy Tale. Not a lot of bloom this year, but done very well. Barely any um black spots or powdery mildew whatsoever so i'm really happy with it but it is sprawling a little bit like kind of outwards it's always wanting to reach out i'm always trying to get it um to stay tidy but it's not listening to me this one actually pretty lady suffered a lot from black spots it was all here i tried my best to remove everything but her top layer is doing good so that's good news but yeah the bottom there were a lot of black spots same with um this one the sun belt one some black spots down here same with this so that's why i'm saying this side of the garden for some whatever reason had a lot of black spot issues which is weird because on the other side all my other roses none of them had any black spots or powdery milieu really very strange and honestly i have no idea why that is Ooh, this salvia is doing really really well still look at that i was very surprised at how big it grew crazy i would definitely want to grow them again but maybe in pots next year the reason being is it's covering this poor delish rose here and i don't think she's very happy because she barely grew this year this one this patch has suffered a lot from powdery mildew and also some kind of rust this one i literally defoliaged the whole uh, like all of its branches it has barely any leaves not branches sorry leaves barely barely any leaves left because it had these rust on it and it got really bad and i was afraid it would um start to spread to the, its surrounding plants so yes it took a while to get uh, rid of all the leaves and this one is a strike it rich yes this is strike it rich very pretty color 
a more light, I guess, orangey color with pink um, on the edges. Very pretty. I think this is her last flush. She still has a few buds that have not opened, but she's uh, hopefully next year we will get more blooms from her. Okay, I think I've, I don't know if I mentioned this before, but this hydrangea I have planted many, many moons ago, probably over 10 years ago. I have no idea what it is, but for whatever reason, I'm loving her this year. Look at the colorings on her once she mature. It's this pinkish um, coloring on her that I really, really love. I try to Google it up. It's either a quick fire or ice and fire. And I looked at the pictures of the blooms online. It could fall under either of those names. But it's really lovely. What I do plan to do with her next year though, because she's sprawling sideways more than upwards, and she's covering all of the sun sunlight uh, for the surrounding plants underneath her, I would, I'm planning to trim her so that she branches upwards more rather than hang. Um, I think I would, like that look a lot more than what she's doing right now this year. Hydrangea still has some blooms on them. This is um, Endless Summer. This is a fresh bloom and a mature bloom looks like that. I can't get in there to um, trim them so I left it alone all summer. But yeah, the fresh blooms look like this. It's quite lovely. My yellow flower uh, rose started, it's still pushing out new growth but no flowers right now. This is the third pincushion one that I was talking to you about. It's really pretty. This is the one that grew really tall and I kind of left it tall. The reason is because I need it to come up over these taller, taller uh, plants. I just chopped down these alliums here. They were done blooming, but they were gorgeous when they were in bloom. So I got three clumps of them. And I think, if I'm not mistaken, starting to self-seed or send out baby ones right maybe I'm mistaken but I think so because I've seen pictures of it if this happens to spread I can transfer it elsewhere in my garden that would look lovely another Baptisia uh, false blue indigo I believe this one apparently I need to trim down so that it can focus on its root system next year I can't wait for the flowers or hopefully it will produce more flowers for me it would look good it, I think I have five so there's one here there's also another one on the other side there autumn joy looking gorgeous these one right here is my first year growing and what is this called? It is a Spurge Ascot Rainbow. So it sends off these blooms. I don't, I'm not crazy about these blooms to be honest. I don't really care too much for them, but the leaves are very interesting. I'm gonna keep them in pots to try to overwinter them. They supposedly spread quite a bit or they grow pretty big, so we'll see. Oh, here's my other patch of um, foxglove that I grew from seed. The, so much leaves, barely any flowers at all really, except for this one spike that's coming up. I'm not sure why they're flowering so late in the season to be honest with you, because normally they are early bloomers. Very weird. Uh, one of my fave in the garden, Gara. If you want a workhorse in the garden, you gotta plant this one. But I find the light color, the light pink, does so much better. Uh, exactly from my experience that is um than the dark color one that i had so she was suffering or be oh she still is actually i was just trying to say look aphids that's the only thing that bothers her a whole bunch of them but i find whenever there's an aphid infestation the ants come or something comes and kind of uh, deals with it and then i also spray it down with water really hard and so that helps too um, this rose here is sending up a whole bunch of new growth. I'm not sure that's a good idea, but that's what it's doing. This one suffered really bad from powdery mildew most of the season, but she's doing really well now. I'm hoping that's a sign that she's more established, healthier. She's able to fight those things off. 
Ooh, there's the other Gumfrina. I am definitely going to, oh, I found her tag. Ah, there she is. Truffola Pink, proven winners. Definitely a must have in the garden, highly recommend. I love them. There's the other Gumfrina I was talking to you about that I paired with Diamond Frost. I love, I mean, I love the growth. It's very compact, it's very lovely. I just don't think that the, this color pairs very too nice with the rest of my color scheme. That's the only reason why I might not grow them again next year. My only surviving China Aster, I believe, that I grew from seed. I don't know why I had such a hard time uh, germinating these ones. So I think they're ant perennials. So what I did is I potted her up in a bigger pot. Hopefully I can overwinter her, but geez, look at this color, it's so pretty. Yeah, I don't know why I was unable to, I was unsuccessful in terms of germinating these from seeds. This one, I, I don't know if I mentioned this before. I have a fascination with propagating stuff, whether, you know, growing from seed or specifically from cuttings. So this is what I experimented with. It came from a mother plant. So I took off the tip of it early in the season, stuck it into soil and you know what, it grew crazy right it became a whole new plant for me so if you ever want to propagate hyssop they're not too hard to do and this is apricot candy she's about done these are her remaining blooms for the season love love this color this is how she looks like when she's out of bloom so apparently i'm not supposed to be or we shouldn't be uh, deadheading them because it'll just send out new growth which is bad because winter is going to come soon so I'm trying my best not to deadhead any of these so that it doesn't put its energy into growing new um, new what is it new um, stems um, this I grew from seed it smells lovely what is the name of this one again something trope oh my gosh I'll put it on the screen if I can find what the name is but yes I grew this from seed a whole pack and I only got three surviving plants yeah growing from seed this one was a bit tricky for me this one kukra is doing very well love the coloring especially this time of year these are the some kind of um, annual daisies I can't remember the exact name do I have the tag oh yes I do have the tag <clears throat> So this daisy is pretty lovely in terms of its formation, but what I don't like about it, and toothly, the lot of it, because I have about five, six of them, different colors. They're very needy. I find they dry out so fast, super fast. And look how leggy she is at this time of year. I don't really love that at all. I don't think I will be planting these next year. Yeah. A little bit too high maintenance for my taste. I don't like plants that require too much of my attention or my time because I don't have the time for it. So yeah, I don't think I'll be uh, planting that again. Midnight Penstemon. Done is blooming, so it's just resting now. Lovely blooms, highly recommend. I love the bloom stock on them when they're in bloom. And even when it was out of bloom, it was just the seed pods or seed spike I guess was still very lovely guess what my desert roses are in bloom finally these guys are so hard for me to get to flowers uh, to flowers sorry I don't even know why that is but yes very pretty color this is gorgeous too bad is only this one patch that has flowers look at this all leaves no flowers and it's been out here all summer long I don't know what I'm doing wrong this one zero flower this year at least at least this little guy here is forming some flowers I will bring these guys in for sure this week it's getting too cold here for them to stay outside Oh, another must grow next year for me for sure. So these, uh, fewer, fewer, I grew from seed. Look how pretty the color, the, the, it's like little baby daisies. It's so pretty and it bloomed all summer for me. So I had one, two, three pots grown. Um, I forget how many plants or seeds I 
did in one part maybe six of them or something like that but yeah a must grow in the garden bloomed all summer I really want to show you guys this one because it's always been tucked in here and barely oh my god this cluster is ginormous look how pretty this bloom is romance summer or something like that I'll put the name on the screen but yes and it's quite frequent too so pretty it's just hiding there beside the, my hydrangea and this one didn't flower too much this year peach perfect where's the tag there it is peach perfect she did better last year I think one of the reasons, as I think I mentioned in my previous um, video, is because it was a evergreen tree that was ginormous. Oh my God, the flower bent over. Oh my gosh, this one's so pretty. <gasps> oh my, I so love, love these colors. They're so pretty. Oh, but they all bent over. They're too heavy. Ah, what a waste. one I'm saving for sure I'm gonna overwinter her yes yeah, sorry I was saying there was a huge there's a stump of it huge evergreen tree here about the size of this one right here blocking all of the sunlight here so these two roses were not happy whatsoever it was one of the reasons why I removed it and secondly in my patio door when I look out it became so big that I hardly see any part of this garden. And then sad, uh, third reason is I already have two evergreens. I really didn't need a third one here. It was just overwhelming. Oh, talk about evergreen. Yeah, look at the mess. It's hard to clean it up. I wish I had a leaf blower. I recently trim, trimmed this one. So it was just one big blob and it was super tall. I hacked off the top. It was bothering me for the longest time, but I shaped it. This was not the shape I had intended. Nope, I had a different shape in mind. But once I started trimming, there were so many diebacks and so many spots that were not doing well, had a whole bunch of these, you know, dead uh, foliage. I decided to modify my shape and this is what I got afterwards. It's kind of hard to pick it up from the uh, camera to be honest, the shape, but I'm hoping next year, it will look much better healthier more new growth and green but this is what I ended up with a whole bunch of these balls here here so this layer is just a whole bunch of these open um, balls and then I got two of these swirly I guess um, what is it design here and I just left the top just one big chunk I, I quite like it. You finally can see my uh, my bird here under it. It was just covered by this evergreen. And then this one I just did a clean up. And look, what I talk about dieback or dead leaves. Yeah, this is what I found in a lot of my evergreen. I don't know, is it because I never trim them? And that's what happens to them because you don't trim them. But I would try to keep on top of it moving forward because that looks very unsightly. Hopefully next year it'll grow some new leaves. So just trim this one up. Nothing, uh, no shape. I think too many shapes, I think it will fight each other. My Sun King here is still doing super well. Loving life in this spot. I think it loves life in this spot because it gets a lot of shade. So this patch here gets mostly shade on this side it gets sun coming in here but this tree is sheltering it so i think it loves this spot a lot and then of course once the sun go on, um, sets on this side the fence covers it so it doesn't get the scorching sun in the uh, afternoon oh i love this cleome i'm going to save the seed i don't really know where she came from but i love this color See what I'm talking about in terms of late season powdery mildew? This is what happens to zinnias. Very unsightly. Yeah, I'm taking these down this week. 
Oh, Lantana. I love, love Lantana. But I gotta say, I was sorely disappointed with this white one I got. I was so happy when I seen it. Look how pretty the blooms are. White with yellow center. I can't remember what the exact name is. I don't think. No, I didn't save the tag. I think I didn't save the tag because I kept ha keep having to transfer it from pots to pots. It was just not doing well. But I have other ones I might be able to show in a um, photo or whatnot, a different color, but they do amazingly well. These ones are though, they're supposed to be full sun. Did not like full sun, suffered in full sun. So I had to hide her here under my more shelter spot. Don't really know why these ones did not do well. But yeah, definitely not doing this color again next year. See them I dug out from the ground, just putting them pots for now. And here we are in my uh, pile or collection of plants that I'm overwintering. Hence why, if you notice, my uh, garden, center garden, potted garden here is not as crowded. It's because a lot of them are sitting here now. I'm getting them ready for winter. Oh yes, that's the, this is the other side. I totally forgot, I didn't even do this side yet. Uh, this is the third Gumfrina. Isn't she lovely? Can you imagine putting them all in like, this year I had them in small pots like this, right? But if you put in a huge pot like this with say two of them, three of them, they, it would look amazing. It would make a really nice impact. But definitely a, a winner in my garden, definitely bringing her back. <clears throat> sedum here I bought the other day potted up in a bigger pot no more flowers but she's still looking good tequila has no tequila rose um, this one right here does not have any open blooms but she has a whole bunch of flower buds still left on her so she's gonna be flowering in the coming weeks or coming days yeah I mean Flowers, still some colors left, but for the most part, things are starting to wind down, slow down, getting ready for winter. Oh, I love this one. I don't know. I'm thinking, how am I going to save this one? I love this color so, so much. Look at the variation of colors. The newer ones are darker, and then as they mature, they fade into this uh, lighter pink but it's just it's such a unique color to me I don't know what it is about it that I love I mean there's a whole bunch of mums out there right now don't like any of those but absolutely love this one I gotta find ways to save it I still want to uh, maintain growing in a pot though I don't want it in the ground and my dahlias I'm waiting for a first frost before I dig up the tubers to save this one came from a mother plant I propagated. I uh, took the tip off and then I just stuck uh, the tip into soil and guess what it took. Love this color so much. It's absolutely gorgeous. Next year I'm planning to plant a whole bunch of them um, in pots again of course and tucking them in my front garden. Cafe Olay. I have a love in, I wouldn't call it hate. Hate seems like a really harsh word for it but I love the flowers, but what I don't like about them is they grow super tall, so you definitely have to stake them up. And secondly, if the flower stem is not strong, it would just bend over and break. It's super high maintenance. I'm still sitting on the fence whether I want to plant them again next year, but the flowers are so, so pretty though. Dahlias here, these guys are really fun to grow super low maintenance pushes out blooms all season long if you're going to grow dahlias i really highly recommend these single ones and they come in a variety of colors in one pack uh, at least the one that i got from costco that one's the yellow one here's the more darker color really pretty and i love the fact they all have dark foliage which really works for my color scheme yeah time to put my garden to bed soon doing some fall maintenance and that will be it. The weather's already turning quite cool here in my area already. So fall is definitely in the air. And before you know it, our first frost is usually around October 9th, 10th or something like that. Well, I hope you enjoy the tour. This will most likely be my last one. And uh, 
can't wait for spring to come to start this process all over again. And that is a wrap. I hope you enjoyed my September garden tour. It's most likely going to be the last time that my gardens is going to be in color still. Uh, moving forward, most of the uh, flowers will probably be dormant uh, or cut back. And if you have enjoyed my videos, consider subscribing. Until next time, happy gardening and see you next time. Bye bye. Okay, as promised, uh, this is uh, the spare room that I was uh, mentioning before where I'm placing my plant to overwinter. So I got my fuchsias in here, three of them. So it's the white one that I have. Um, I tidied them up in the video before, trimmed them back. This is the purpley pinkish one. This one is a very nice one. Love this combination so I do expect some of the leaves to fall down because obviously the amount of light they have will be a lot less than what they were receiving uh, which I think is quite normal right for them to kind of go into dormancy a little bit oh my god I'm so glad I saved this one gorgeous color it's a begonia I was about to kind of dig it up and uh, store the tuber but I wasn't even sure if it has tubers or chrome or whatever you call them so I just Took in the plants so as i mentioned remember the um, white lantana i said didn't do well well these ones have done amazing this color is gorgeous this one is so fragrant especially at night time when it's night time during the summertime and you come near this um these three there's three right here they're standard tree forms they smell absolutely amazing this one i had up in the front in a long what is it box a flower planter box so there were quite a few of them um, and they did amazingly well look how much they have grown I bought them as a tiny plant or plants um, and they have grown so so big have been amazing done really really well these guys the best thing about them they're heat tolerant they never needy even in the hottest of uh, weather they were fine oh, I love low maintenance plants and look how gorgeous this color is so yes because they are so big I know there are annuals in my area but because they've grown so big I didn't really want I mean it's easy to buy them and find them next year again but I just love the, their size and I want to be able to grow them indoors so that next year I have an even bigger mount because if I buy them every year they can only grow so big until winter comes they die off and then next year I buy another set it's never gonna get that big but if I overwinter them next year I will have an even bigger mount so I think it will make more of an impact in terms of color wise so yeah this is my setup right now uh, so it's right beside a window so we receive quite a bit of light. I do plan to be put additional lights in here once they arrive. I've ordered them. So that hopefully will help in terms of maintaining them over uh, the winter months. There you have it. And yes, it has a fan here too, so that uh, it circulates the air. I don't want things to go moldy or start, you know, growing. I don't know what else it has. Uh, but so far, I haven't seen any bugs. Oh yes, I should mention, I did buy uh, more of those yellow sticky tapes. So what I plan to do is stick them all into these pots. I may not be seeing any fungus gnat right now, but they might be incubating and they might come out later. And I definitely do not want to run into the issue of having them, you know, invest everything in my house like it did in the past. So yes, those tapes will be uh, used and hopefully it will catch whatever flies that will come out of here. I did put, uh, you know, cardboard uh, to protect my flooring. Can look, you can see some of the leaves are dropping already i don't want it to make a mess on my hardwood floor so yeah oh yes i'm propagating some i love propagating stuff it's experimenting i'm not always successful but it's such a fun process uh, so yes i'm trying to propagate some roses there yeah there you have it that's my setup
she rebounded. Look at her now. Isn't she gorgeous? This is Melody Dora. I have two, three in my garden and she is a stunner. Definitely coming back. And if her, once I dig her out of her pots and see how, I'm gonna see how many tubers she has. I'm going to divide her so that I have more of her next year. I absolutely love, love this color. So pretty, very productive, been blooming all summer. So these are the cafe au lait that I have growing at the side of my side garden. Look how lovely this color is. Oh my gosh, it's one of the prettiest one in this pack actually. Gorgeous. The big, what is it, creamy yellow in the center and pale pink on the edge. These ones require a lot of staking. A lot, a lot. So I have a bit of a love hate with these uh, cafe au lait. They're gorgeous, stunning blooms, but this is what happens. The flower is just too heavy and it snaps, it breaks. And what a waste, because look how gorgeous this flower is. I won't be growing them in this patch next year either because um, they suffered a lot from, I'm suspecting, earwigs. Look what they do to the leaves. All season long, they've been eating, munching, and look at the flowers. Yeah, this is what happens. They eat them. Poor thing got eaten all summer. Yeah, I'm definitely digging them up and putting them in a different location next year. But gorgeous color. Really pretty.